We've talked about reflections and transmissions at boundaries of two different impedances. Now let's look at another important thing called an impedance match. An impedance match just means two sides where Z1 equals Z2. They don't have to necessarily be the same medium, media, for Z1 to equal Z2. And this is interesting because if Z1 equals Z2, R equals zero. Nothing will reflect back. So if you're trying to create anything that's a wave system that uses waves and you don't want anything coming back for the highest possible transmission efficiency, you want the whole thing to be impedance matched. So let's think the problem with impedance matching, what makes it hard is for a string, you can't quite do it the way I built my string, right? So I had um, the low index string or the, the uh, low impedance string Z1, which was the square root of the tension times mu1, and I had Z2, which was the square root of the tension times mu2. So this is the higher mass density, it's the higher impedance. And you can't get them equal because the mu's are different and they have to have the same T. When you tie two strings together, elastic strings, and pull them, they're gonna have the same tension. So you can't impedance match with the string. Although in theoretical physics and in homework problems, we have this thing we draw that allows us to adjust the impedance of a string. It's basically a magical, frictionless, massless, ring. So if we imagine this little frictionless massless ring on a rod here, so it can move up and down and we tie the strings to it. So one string is tied to this side and one string is tied to this side and this one has now its impedance is T1 mu1 and this one has a different mass density <clears throat> but now it can have its own tension because you can pull them to different tensions on either side of the frictionless rod. With this, in principle, you could impedance match a string and send uh, a pulse through an interface and not get a reflection. But there are no frictionless massless rods. Now come to think about it, I've never, never actually tried to do this with a really light rod and a really well greased, or a really light ring and a greased rod. Maybe it actually works, I don't know. But, but this isn't usually how we would demonstrate um, an impedance match. One way is to just have the same medium. And I can kind of show you that here we're back with the wave machine, and before you saw something with one impedance and something with a different impedance, well now I've just got two identical ones. Right? So this one does what you'd think, they're not coupled right now, so if I just give this one a little pulse, the pulse goes up, it hits so, uh, an area of very low impedance, basically an open boundary, and it reflects a positive pulse back, just like, like you would expect. But now I can couple these two together, and at the interface, um, the interface, they now have the same impedance, it's now one, they're impedance matched, so it should behave pretty much like one continuous medium. You should get no reflection at this interface. It's not perfect to clamp two things together, but it should be pretty good. So let's check this kind of an impedance match here. So here's your pulse, and there it goes, and it goes right through, look at that. Happily goes right through. Maybe if you looked really close, a teeny reflection, because it's not a perfect impedance match, but it's pretty good. Okay, but that's not an exciting impedance match because, I mean, it's just the same medium, right? Let's look at another way to have R equal to zero. Uh, and that is to realize, you may have noticed that impedance, the, the, the equation we had was force equals impedance times transverse velocity. So we had force equals a constant times velocity way back on oscillators, and that's how you damped an oscillator, right? The resistive force. So what you can actually do is have your string, um, or your medium, whatever it is, send it, and at the end have a dash pot, right? So the dash pot was this thing with a little vein on it, and you put it in oil, and you get an F equals minus B times V. That's what we used to damp a, um, a, an oscillator. And the V would be for this thing moving up and down. If you think about it, that's the same as the transverse velocity. If this wave has transverse velocity, <coughs> um, and that's what the, the impedance is force equals uh, impedance times transverse velocity, that's the same velocity you'll give to the dash pot inside of there. So you can see the impedance is the same place in the equation as this. 
they're sort of the same thing. Impedance is, remember when we were launching the waves in the string, it was the resistance to motion. Well, this is also resistance to motion, okay? So, but you might worry, this is a wave and this is energy dissipation. Well, kind of what's the difference? If I shake the end of a string, I am dissipating energy into the string. If I shake a dash pot in water, I am dissipating energy into the water. They're not really that different, if you think about it. So, in the end though, what happens is these are two media. This one has an impedance, this one has essentially an impedance, and if they match, the wave will go away. So let's see if we can do that. So this thing was designed so that its impedance matches this dash pot in water. So here you can see, there it is, a little thing attached to a rod. It's in a container of water. And we attach it to the final rod and see what it does to the wave. Let's see, let it calm down. And I'm gonna launch the wave. And there it goes, and it killed it. Gone, because we have an impedance match. So we get no reflection. That is so exciting. The drama of that is so amazing. I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. There it goes, right through the interface, and gone. Nothing left. So that's another way to impedance match. You may have heard of impedance in some electrical, um, uh, you know, uh, circuits lab. If you start using AC signals on, you know, uh, BNC cables, things like that, they have a characteristic impedance, and you might, you've seen these like 25 or 50 ohm terminators you put at the end of the cable. That's what that's doing. It's basically a resistor that matches the impedance of the cable that makes sure no signals reflect back if you do your standard electrical analog of mechanical things. That's what that is. Let's see. You don't always have the option to change all your properties, and you don't always have the option to damp things, right? This is kind of cheating. You're just turning it into heat. The one last thing I'll just show you we won't do in detail is you can get into more complicated interfaces. You can get into multi-layers. And we'll talk about something kind of analogous in optics, but you'll have forgotten about this by then. It's so far away. Um, and with a multi-layer, basically what I mean is you could have maybe a thin string like this, Z1, and then a fairly thick string, Z2, and then maybe some intermediate string, Z3, and then, who knows, and then, and then back, or then a wall, I don't know. The point is, if you start mixing media with different or with different uh, impedances and adjust their lengths, you can get interference effects where you can actually kill waves or get high transmission or get high reflection. And you can do it even when you're limited in your properties and you're not allowed to just arbitrarily change everything. When we get into optics and optical materials, we're somewhat limited in our ability to adjust what is effectively their impedance uh, to light. So impedance actually shows up in many kinds of waves, but here you've seen it in our mechanical analog.